Having the mindset of always improving, always getting better, and that you're not you're not a finished product um, really sets you apart. And I mean, the discipline of not doing, not staying out at late, not not sleeping in, getting up and being active, and just doing things the right way on and off the field is eventually it ex- it excels you at a different rate than it would excel other people. Hey there, high performers. This is Dr. Josh Funk. In this podcast, I will be interviewing people from the sports and business world who have experienced hardship and come out on top. Through their challenges, strategies, and mindset, I hope that it will give you the tools you need to perform for life. What's going on, everybody? I am very, very excited to bring to you today my brother, Jake Funk. Welcome, Jake. Pleasure to have me. Excited to have you on, man. I think you've had a lot of stuff going on over the past couple years, and then I think overall that your story is just a good one that I think a lot of parents, coaches, and young people can learn from. Let's dive in a little bit just to what it was like to grow up in the Funk household. Uh, Huge emphasis on sports, different season, different sport, uh, and just some of the different things that whether or not it was uh, our dad, which is uh, you know who we share, and for those of the people that don't know, I am one of five siblings. Um, I grew up in a standard American family. I share two siblings on my mom's side and then two siblings on my dad's side. On my dad's side, it's myself, Jake, and Jordan. But um, my dad and stepmom, Elisa, uh, were both college athletes, and physical activity was just such a huge, huge part of what we did. What was it like growing up in the Funk household? I would uh, personally just say it was chaotic all the time, always stuff going on, whether that was sports or just physical activity in general. Um, me and Jordan, obviously, being a little bit closer than you, we we got to do a lot of the things simultaneously, whether that was club lacrosse, basketball, football, and all the other sports combined as growing up. Um, it was just chaotic. It was crazy. But, I mean, my parents did a great job at managing it, and, you know, it worked out. Yeah, I mean, they did a great job. They chose Damascus, which uh, I think a lot of people are aware that's kind of like a youth sports factory. Dad admits it openly all the time. That was one of the main reasons why he chose to move there um, after divorcing my mom. And um, Damascus now is extremely successful in a wide variety of different sports. They still have a very, very, very prevalent youth sports organization, which I think is becoming Mm -hmm. more and more rare. Talk a little bit about DSA growing up and then also having dad be be your coach. I think DSA is a huge reason why Damascus is so successful in a lot of the sports at the high school level. Um, I think DSA does a great job at one preparing kids for higher level competition as well as preparing them for the culture and what the standard is at the high school um, with sports. And then on top of that, having my dad be the my coach growing up just put more pressure on me individually where it was like the coach's son always has to perform well because you don't want your teammates looking at you as not getting um, criticized for be, because you're the coach's son. So there's more pressure. And I mean, just having your dad as the coach, it, it was kind of comforting as well, um, where you knew that somebody could talk to you in a way that um, you understood and could criticize you in a way that they know how to. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I think it can be a blessing. It can be challenging at times. How how would you describe dad's coaching style and then overall kind of how that translates to both him as a parent as well? I think his coaching style was obviously different in a big group compared to when it was me or me and him one on one. In a big group, I would say he was more of a calm coach. He would not yell. He would not scream. He wouldn't. uh, get up in anybody's face or anything if they did something wrong. He, he, would more, he was more of the coach that if you know, did something wrong, he'd pull you off to the side, talk to you one-on-one, and make sure that it doesn't happen again. And then individually, I would say that he was by far growing up my biggest critic. There was the standard at him, with him was so great that everything that I did positively – he would he would obviously compliment me, but there was always something to improve on with him. Where whether that was in terms of football, whether that was a missed tackle or a missed assignment, there was always some little thing um, that he critiqued. And I think that that standard that he 
he established of never being perfect and never being uh, complacent really is a big reason why I was as successful as I am with the sport. Yeah, and I think a lot of people might maybe view that as a negative, almost uh, maybe making an assumption that like, oh, man, he didn't sound like he was happy with like how well his son was doing. Dad praised us a lot, but I think his he was very candid, right? Mm-hmm. He was very, very yep. honest with us. He never blew smoke, if we want to mm-hmm. use kind of a buzz term. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, he created a level of awareness in us at a young age that mm-hmm. also allowed us to have a high level uh, of self-awareness. Talk about how you think that translated uh, as you started to become more successful in sports, going from you know a young person who uh, you know excelled in, in, in multiple different sports growing up, predominantly before you got to high school, football, basketball, and lacrosse, and then what that was like as you started to have some success uh, in sports, especially football at the high school level. I would say the biggest thing that that personally helped with was when I got to the high school level, Everything was filmed, whether that was practice or uh, games. And I think being able to n- know that you aren't, that everything's not perfect, that you're able to watch film and you're able to critique yourself more and you, you're able to self-evaluate more. And I think going through high school, looking at game films, there was always stuff to improve on. And and I could personally, after having my whole life, be told like told criticism at times. And I think I was able to take the film, take what I learned from my dad in terms of like what to look for, what what can you do to improve, and then be able to self embody it and really take charge of it on my own. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know, our dad played football at Penn State, so football was something that Jake and him shared a love of at a very very young age, and you know he could coach the higher level skill stuff. But one of the things I think Dad always did such a good job of was not focusing too much on your success Mm -hmm. he would focus predominantly on things that happened between between the whistle in terms of how you were conducting yourself what you were doing um, how hard you were working how well you were leading more of these process oriented items at what age did you realize that that was something that was uh, was being communicated to you and how do you think that really really allowed you to handle what was a decent amount of you know, attention and, and, and success, especially in your junior year of high school? I think I really started to understand um, those areas well as a, I would say, eighth grader and going into my freshman year of high school because I did have some success in eighth grade where high schools were recruiting me to play at a private school level. So I think going into high school, as as soon as I got to varsity and I started having the success that I did, having those attributes that dad instilled and dad still instills today, those attributes just highlight everything that you have to do when you get success in a sport or you have success in general. You have to remain disciplined in what you do. You have to remain humble as well. And I mean, I think those things just carry on and and have helped me throughout the process as well. Yeah, I think the big thing that a lot of people will struggle with some of that with some of that success is success is viewed on a parallel with results. And because you are succeeding and having these ideal results that other people are trying to have, we lose track of the fact that sometimes success happens as a result of things that we are inherently or naturally good at. Instead of focusing on the fact that the habits themselves may or may not be ideal and actually leading to those results. So we could have somebody who's highly, highly talented with poor habits that is able to have success and results at a young age. However, those are the people I'd argue it's going to catch up with them. Something that I think we share, and I would say out of my siblings, we're probably the most alike. The process was something that we were able to grasp at a very, very young age. Whether or not it was the self-discipline aspect or being comfortable standing apart Um, from the crowd and maybe doing things a little bit differently. But that was something I saw in you. And I think it really eventually led led to you being, yeah, a little bit more of a a late bloomer, especially when you got to high school. You Mm -hmm. grew a little bit later. But having the success you did uh, in your senior year and ideally be able to block a lot of that out and continue on this path of I I know where I want to get to. And despite my success, I know that I'm I'm not a finished product yet. Yeah, I would just say the – the self-discipline in high school was definitely a reason why I had the success that I did. Like you said, having 
the mindset of always improving, always getting better, and that you're not you're not a finished product really sets you apart. And I mean, the discipline of not doing, not staying out at late, not not sleeping in, getting up and being active, and just doing things the right way on and off the field is eventually it ex- it excels you at a different rate than it would excel other people. Absolutely, and I I can't forget, or otherwise I'll hear about this later, but um, Elisa, we, we are uh, definitely aware that you are a part of this process as well. Elisa is my stepmom and, and Jake's mom, so we want to make sure that we don't you know, miss her when it comes to acknowledgement. Of course, of course. She, uh, to this day, still believes and still says to me that she's the best athlete in the family, so I'll hold her to that, and I mean, only time can tell. So. It's all right. We'll, 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 we'll let her have that. Mm-hmm. You had a, high, uh, a highly successful high school career, and then you left the confines, um, a more comfortable area with regards to Damascus High School, chose to play Division One football for the University of Maryland. What was that transition like? The transition was definitely a very big transition, very um, diverse transition, I would say, in different aspects. Um, they, in Damascus, it's a very small town, very small atmosphere where you know everybody, everybody knows you, um, and I mean, I think when I got to the University of Maryland, it's a 40,000 student school. So that transition alone, opening up your whole horizon to different kinds of people, um, different ethnicities, def- different socioeconomic backgrounds, the whole gamut of the world just came crashing to me after being in a very isolated place. Um, and then f- from a football perspective, I would say that the biggest thing, the biggest change was the size and speed of the game Um, because you're growing up, you're used to playing around your friends and being the best at what you do. And everybody looks at you as the fastest. Everybody looks at you as the best football player, the best athlete. That's how you are around your social group. But then when you get to the University of Maryland, everybody's the exact same. So I think that um, alone is was the biggest change for me, where I wasn't the biggest, I wasn't the fastest, and I wasn't the strongest as when I came in as a freshman. Big fish in a small pond, and now you're just another big fish of many in an even bigger pond, right? Mm-hmm, exactly. Um, you went in there, freshman year, definitely an adjustment period, right? Mm-hmm. You played pretty much every game freshman year. Yeah. You even scored... Um, what, what, twice, twice, twice. You're, you know, freshman year, but regardless, an adjustment period. Uh, sophomore year being something that allowed you to uh, experience some more success. And w- w- what would you attribute just the intangibles and some of the things emphasized to you growing up during some of the ups and downs of those first two years? I would just say the a big thing that I learned growing up is that the little details and what you do off the field are make a huge difference on what you do on the field. And I've learned that going through my college years as well, where the, the little extra time you put in, whether that's on a Saturday night watching film instead of hanging out with your friends, the little details that you begin to learn and mature on how, how you need to work off the field really attribute to the success on the field. And I think throughout college – it's reflecting that where every year it just got to learn a little bit more about how to be a pro, how to, how to do my business off the field like a pro would and handle myself. Yeah. Being professional, right? Mm-hmm. You, you can be professional despite not necessarily being an actual professional, but conducting yourself in a manner in which, you know, you're showing up every day, you're doing the right things and this kind of, you know, 1% better or just focusing on being greater than you were yesterday. Then after those first two years, you know, a lot happened for you. You had some coaching changes. You had a teammate, unfortunately, pass away. Injury bug hit you for the first time ever in your life. Mm-hmm. Talk to us about these past two years and, and just some of the challenges you, you've gone through and, and, and just kind of where you're at now. I would say the last two years of my life have been the craziest roller coaster that you could ever imagine. You know, Jordan McNair, who obviously has gone on national TV and has gotten national recognition for what has happened, unfortunately. I un- un- unfortunately, you know, had a teammate pass away. And the hardships with that is 